In the previous engagement at the Granicus, 334 BC, the Persian forces led by the satraps of Asia Minor and their mercenaries suffered defeat at the hands of the attacking Macedonians. Alexander's army continued to advance into Persian-controlled territory by passing through the western coastal cities. In order not to hinder the progress of his land march, Alexander disbanded his fleet after taking Miletus, as it would not have been able to hold out against the superior Persian naval forces anyway. His goal was to advance by land to Persepolis, the capital of the Persian Empire ruled by great king Darius III. Alexander divided his forces into two groups. The first, smaller unit was commanded by Koinos. Koinos staged an illusion of superiority by lighting so many bonfires before the battle that Poros got the impression that Alexander's entire army was still across the river. Meanwhile, Alexander's group was crossing the Hydast River, later named after the battle, in extreme conditions. Poros only monitored the side of the river where he expected Alexander to cross his troops, not knowing that Alexander had already passed the river about 27 kilometers above Harenpur. On one side Poros had the river, which he could not cross with his elephants, and on the other side was Alexander's group. Alexander was aware that elephants could also be dangerous to the Indian troops in battle. Alexander dispatched Parmenion, the commander of his infantry and Peloponnesian cavalry. His task was to reach the Syrian border crossings with his 15,000 soldiers to secure them against the Persians before reuniting with Alexander. Alexander himself led his army first to Issus and then continued along the coastal road, expecting to meet the enemy at some point. Darius also decided to face Alexander's approaching army on the plain near Issus, which he considered strategically advantageous. Both commanders tried to lure the enemy onto terrain that was unfavorable for them. Nevertheless, Darius eventually left the favorable Syrian plain with his large army and marched along a road to the east to Issus, not realizing that the two armies were only separated by a mountain range. When Darius heard of the enemy soldiers left behind in Issus and learned that Alexander had taken the coastal road, he followed him with his troops. Alexander, for his part, ordered his units to return to Issus in forced marches after learning that the enemy was behind him. The battlefield was bordered by the mountains on one side and the Mediterranean Sea on the other. These topographical conditions disadvantaged the Persian superiority in troops, which meant that the terrain worked in Alexander's favor. Alexander placed the bulk of his cavalry on the right wing and joined them. In the center was the Macedonian phalanx. On the left wing, facing the sea, cavalry and infantry advanced under Parmenian. The Macedonian foot troops were to tie down the enemy until an opportunity arose to attack the Persian center. Darius positioned his strong cavalry on the right wing, facing the sea, where the flat terrain was ideal for cavalry attacks. The center of the front was occupied by heavily armed Greek mercenaries. On the left, lightly armed Persian infantrymen were traditionally to operate. The king himself waited with his guard behind the center of the front to see how events unfolded. Alexander gave the units the order to attack, and indeed a gap opened up in the Persian front. His bold advance was exemplary for the cavalrymen and led to success. The Persian infantry retreated but defended themselves stubbornly. Alexander fought his way through the enemy to the vicinity of Darius III. The latter recognized the impending danger and fled. Meanwhile, the Macedonian phalanx had to cross the fast-flowing Pinaros River, which created gaps in the ranks. Greek mercenaries fighting on Darius' side took advantage of this and inflicted losses on the attackers. The Persian cavalry on the seaward side also attacked the Greek infantry and the Thessalian horsemen hard. Alexander helped the beleaguered Greeks by using his cavalry in a crescent-shaped maneuver. He then attacked the flanks of the enemy center. The Persians were discouraged by the flight of their commander. Although the situation was by no means hopeless, the Persians, including their allies, retreated, leaving the Macedonians to win. 
Alexander massacred the retreating enemies. Darius escaped, while Parmenian and his Macedonian army advanced to Damascus after the battle.